Hey there, welcome back to Featherwood Farm. This is Darcy, and tonight I want to do a garden tour. So I'm hopefully gonna take you through all of the beds. Hopefully there won't be a lot of uh, car noise. I'm doing it, it's like, I don't know, 8.20 in the evening, um, right before I kind of start putting all of the animals to bed. So yeah, hopefully it'll be a calm, quiet, and we'll just hear some bird noise rather than traffic noise. And this is, that corner garden that I wanted a really park-like feel um, that we just did a month or so ago. And the most impressive thing, the little plugs that I put in here, especially the nepetas, um, they're, they're quite large. Because when I get you to the uh, fire pit and deck area where I planted some of these, they are much smaller, but these ones are quite enormous. And I'm chalking that up to the fact that I put a lot of our farm compost in this bed and not in any of the others. So I think they had some more nutrients in here. Uh, yeah, and the asters as well are a lot bigger. I mean, if you can remember, those were, you know, just little things. And these are the Mystica penstemons that have been flowering for Oh, I'd say a few weeks now. Still looking lovely, still going strong. Lots of hummingbirds and bees have been by. I still have yet to finish the gate. I have so many gates that I need to build. I kind of want to just knock them out in one fell swoop. Just a whole day dedicated to building gates, riveting stuff. Um, but if we turn around, I've been adding some cute little adornments. So here I just have a begonia in this really shady corner. And that's just in an urn planter that I got at a little antique store and set it on a stump. I put Luther on this wall hanging shelf thingy. He just looks so regal there. Um, but looking lovely in the garden. This is the black scallop ajuga, and it is by far my favorite. A, I love the actual shape. I mean, you see the leaves are scalloped, thus the name. They're quite dark. There's obviously still some green in there, but overall much darker than the chocolate chip ajuga, which is just across the way here. This one, flowered really well. Both are spreading well. Both are doing exactly what I had hoped that they would do. Um, but there, yeah, the, the black scallop is just really pretty. Um, at my local nursery, I saw a couple other varieties. I think one was called mahogany and the other one was metal something. I can't recall right now, but they also looked like darker varieties um, with a similar leaf shape to the black scallop. The chickens have been doing a number on my hostas over here, unfortunately, as well as the poor virginias that I planted. So, so long as the roots are getting a good hold, they'll have a better jump start next year in the spring. And maybe once I get this gate up, it'll keep the chickens out a little bit better. I doubt it, but helpful thinking. Um, this is the Limetta hydrangea starting to bud up and everything is covered in little twigs. We just had a couple of windy days and I have not gone around and picked up all of the branches and twigs that have fallen. But something that I do want to do over here is kind of rearrange the hostas. Um, when I put these in last year, I had gotten them all the previous year on clearance and Lowe's had actually just like marked all of their hostas down to a dollar each and Brandon and I bought maybe 20 of them and so many of them didn't have uh, ID tags. So, you know, I didn't know the variety, I didn't know the shape and the color and I just plunked them in here. Um, and yeah, I kind of want to redress that and I'll do that in the fall. I believe once they start going dormant. Don't want to do that right now. I have picked up a few more 
perennials to add in here. So right here, I have a raspberry wine Monarda. This is actually a cultivar that I'm growing in the courtyard area that I really like. And I wanna see how it performs here because this is a tricky area. It gets some pretty um, intense afternoon heat and then a little bit of dappled, or I'm sorry, some pretty intense afternoon light and then some dappled light in the evening as well. A little bit of dappled light um, in the mornings. So these can tolerate part shade. I wanna see how it does here because that would be a really nice pop of color um, kind of in the midsummer season. And I did add another um, of these astilbes in here, the dark side of the moon astilbes to round out the two that I already had as well as these little anemones. These are a shorter variety. They are called uh, Curtain Call Deep Rose. I think they get 14 to 16 inches tall and they are, uh, yeah, what it sounds like a deep rose color. Um, I'm gonna move this ginkgo out of the way and put them right here because even though I planted those geraniums here, those bare roots, uh, the chipmunks that came in and took all of my crocus corms um, also destroyed those bare roots so they didn't take here and I need something a little bit more substantial here I see but the astrontias that we planted these are the star of flames are already blooming so that's nice it wasn't all a total loss and some of the other geraniums are doing well as well it's just kind of that particular area and I think it's specifically because of the crocuses the foxglove are a seed foxglove that I planted here last year. A nice peach color. And they are starting to go over. Um, the first flush is, but I'm already seeing on some of them sending up some shorter new shoots. So that's really lovely. And this is the Philopendula that is also starting to go over. There's a couple. These never seem to uh, last as long as I would like, which is kind of contradictory to what their description says. Their description says that they're a long flowering perennial. At least I have read that somewhere. So for me, not quite so much. And this is the area that I'm just kind of waiting to fill out from these three shrubs. Behind that is a phlox that I transplanted. This is one that was here when we first moved to the property. Um, I believe this is the pink flowering one. Couldn't tell you the variety, but it's just, you know, a paniculata, kind of a more traditional style one. And right here, I did order two more sprinter boxwoods to fill in that gap and kind of close this off as well as more of that metal edging to continue. And I think it's gonna go, should make it to about the elm tree. And then I'll kind of clean all of that up, get all this mulch that the chickens have scratched over there, put back in and really clean up this area a bit more. And I did get another of these Eclipse Hydrangeas and put in for a pop of dark foliage because if I take a step back, um, once that's closed off, I have the path through here already and it's going to extend out this way. So I got some of my Monardas put in here, which are flowering and they're actually quite large flowers. I mean, this plant is maybe six inches tall and this bloom is about two inches across. They're a little more purple than I thought that they would be, but I think it's going to work. So they will stay. And then right here are the opening act pink dot phlox. Really, really pretty. And phlox, I've been fortunate. I have not had any powdery mildew issues with the, any of the flocks that I have. These are Midnight Masquerade Penstemon. 
I got a few more of these to kind of continue the drift down there and hide some of that daffodil foliage. These I got as bare roots last year. And so this is just, you know, one year of growth that they've put on. It's quite impressive. And some more over there behind this boxwood. Actually, you can see the bees are still out and working them. And up here, this, I will not be addressing this season. I'm gonna wait until end of season. Um, these nepetas are just far too large for this area. This is now three plants. And I mean, they are taking up this whole chunk of space and they're really uh, flopping and I'll replace them. I still like the idea of having a nepeta here, but um, I'm thinking maybe something smaller. These are those dianthus that I wasn't sure last year how they would perform um, in my kind of wet soil, but they survived and they're blooming. And here's one of those just odd things. So this is a chocolate eupatorium and I have three plants, these two quite large. And then you got this little guy down here and you know, they're a couple foot apart in the same kind of sun and soil conditions. I couldn't tell you why that one is performing so much more poorly than the others, but it is. And uh, sadly, the deer did come through here and kind of chop off the heads of all of the Rudbeckias that were growing through here. So I have Rudbeckias mixed in with some Sanguisorbas. The Sanguisorbas are doing fairly well. The actual foliage growth is doing pretty well. Um, I was concerned about these. They're kind of slow going for me, but they will shoot up cute little burgundy red um, kind of cottontail like plumes. Okay, so that is the new path there. And then on this other side, the Estrontias are going strong. These are Abbey Road or Burgundy Manor. Couldn't tell you which. And actually, if we backtrack, these astilbes are just starting to bloom as well. My wisteria is doing so good. It's so exciting. It'll be a while before it blooms, might be a couple more years, but it is putting on a lot of growth going right up this. So before I know it, I will need to finish this and add the kind of top bar supports there. I did pick up a couple of sedges that I want to mix in here. They are a white variegated sedge. Actually, let's see what variety it is. Yes, uh, Feathered Falls. So I have those speckled throughout. Here's the blooms on these eclipse hydrangeas. Just beautiful. And these are a reblooming variety. The Haas halos are really starting to fill in and getting ready to put on their show. Oh, somebody came through here and broke. <laughs> a couple branches off of this Tough Stuff hydrangea. I've been having some real bunny problems, so I don't know if that was my chickens or a bunny. These are all of those anemones um, that have really filled in. So actually I had to move a couple of the uh, 
max rider geraniums that I planted in an earlier video. I had to pull them out because these just really took off. Which um, I think is their third year being here, so that makes sense. And here is where I want to put another one of those Midnight Masquerade penstemons. Again, break up that green a little bit. I have some new annuals ready to go in this planter box. I will be reworking this little corner as well um, in the fall once the hostas kind of start to go dormant. Again, I just threw some in here. The color mixing isn't really working for me. What does work for me is this Japanese painted fern with the hellbores. I really like how that looks. And the Kodiak black honeysuckle is just starting to bloom as well. Lovely bright yellow blooms that the bees love. Actually, we have someone down here right now working hard. I pulled out all of these um, native alliums, these allium serenums, nodding onions. <laughs> here they are right here. They were reseeding like crazy. And unfortunately it was reseeding all into my path, all into my lawn kind of areas that were a little more tedious to keep maintained than what I was looking for. So I yanked them out um, and I think those will also go up to my parents up north as well. And the little shade corner looking nice. I have a bit of a chlorosis issue on these goat's beards back here, so I will be addressing that very soon. The bug veins are sending up their spikes. So this one is taller than me. I'd say it's pretty darn close to six foot tall at this point, maybe five and a half foot tall. Those are gonna be looking lovely very soon and smelling lovely as well. All right, and then coming across the way, I probably won't spend too much time over here because I just shared this bed in a recent video. Everything is doing well over here. So the GMs, a couple of hookahs, some daisies, baptisias, liatris, coneflowers. I don't think I had mentioned, but this is a vernonia, an ironweed. Um, most of the berries have been picked by the birds, so not a whole lot of berries left on the service berry there. Um, for this arbor, I do have a Clematis Boulevard Bernadine that I want to put here. Unless I change my mind because I have another variety I have to think about which one I want here, but I think that Boulevard Bernadine is going to win out. And I should have gotten two of them because they grow to six foot tall, so I should have gotten another one for the other side, but still time for that. This is the Amber Jubilee Nine Bark which has some really lovely mix of colors that it gets. Kind of this red, copper, bronze, green. It's really lovely. And the Caradonna salvia plugs that I planted. I'm gonna get a couple of blooms off of them, so that's adorable. I thought that I had removed all of my milkweed and planted it in a different area, but it would appear that I missed a few, so we'll let them be for now. They're already starting to flower. And this is like a little happy moment that I'm pretty excited about. The Jackmania clematis is starting to wind its way through this Amber Jubilee nine bark and blooming. And that's just awesome. Couldn't have planned it better myself. Oop. The Burning Heart Heliopsis 
is starting to bloom. The deer came through and kind of buzz cut a lot of this as well, unfortunately. Um, but that all happened before I was really able to get a good layer of the deer repellent on because we'd had so much rain. So I went around, sprayed everything. Nobody's been back since. Um, my fluffy arbs are still looking good. They have not been touched. Hopefully that didn't jinx it there. This is one of the irises that I had um, transplanted when I was reworking this area and she was not happy about it. Let's just say that. She's not dead. She'll be fine, but not happy. And here are the Mai Tai GMs that I was talking about that are sending up more blooms still. Another milkweed plant that I missed. The white wands Veronica starting to bloom. Need to get through here and do a bit of weeding. I still have not filled in this area yet in due time, but the daisies. Just gonna be a sea of beautiful white daisies to brighten up this area. It's kind of my favorite. And that is about it for what is in bloom over here. Um, oh, actually, I guess I failed to mention that the spirea is. And so is this rose marvel salvia. Um, so these are actually Verbena bonariensis, and these are the ones that are um, native to Brazil, I believe. And I planted these last year because in my area they're supposed to be an annual and there's not supposed to be a reseeding or invasive issue. And while they did not reseed at all, I have them a in a few areas, I assumed the plant would die and they did not, they did come back. So I will be yanking those out um, the end of the season here, just because I do not want them to become any sort of issue. Do not want to deal with that. Our old swings just kind of broke. <laughs> um, the ropes all kind of deteriorated, so replaced the swings. These ones are nice and comfy, and I plan on staining the wood frame black eventually. And over here in front of the cut garden and orchard, more of those opening act pink dot phlox. And this is just a mess. I've kind of been neglecting this area. Um, I do have a few button bushes. This one I transplanted from the courtyard behind these milkweed here. And then a tiny one over there that was in a container. This one has been here for one or two years now. I can't remember. And I think I am finally going to actually get some of their amazing, unique blooms. So that is about the most exciting thing. Cannot wait. Um, but this is the area that I transplanted most of my milkweeds to. And one of those um, Shenandoah switchgrasses, a Northwind switchgrass, and I planted a bunch of the little um, Bee Mine Red Monardas, little, little plugs down there. This is Thriller Lady's Mantle, looking lovely. And behind that is some red beckias, and behind that are the tiny wine gold nine barks, which should grow a bit taller. Um, and then behind that is some more milkweed, and that actually was self seeded milkweed. Um, this one right here I planted. This is the nine bark that was struggling. I cut out most of the dead. Um, it should, should hopefully bounce back if the issue was the walnut tree like I suspect it was. 
and then lots and lots of dying daffodil foliage. And then making our way, it is a pink Eden Climber rose. Throwing out lots of big beautiful blooms. And I got this bed all mulched in as well. Oh, and this is the Eustacea Vi. Just the most beautiful flowers, such a beautiful smell. I believe, if I'm remembering correctly, these are purple star echinaceas. Uh, they will get a lot taller than this. This is their first year in this spot. I had transplanted them. The lavender bed is looking excellent. This is the one that the chickens did not destroy, but I have purchased replacements for the other bed. I have yet to get them and I just got those a couple days ago. But it smells so wonderful. Um, so this is one of the areas that I'm having some rabbit issues. They have come through and eaten nearly all of my pumpkin spice hookerellas. Yeah, this one is nothing. Um, so I don't know how that is going to do. Hopefully the roots are strong enough to uh, keep it alive for me. I did get my bird bath for the space though. So that's exciting. I do want to put a little uh, solar fountain in there. The Uri Iris. So many blooms on these. They were doing really, really well. Again, these were also bare roots from last year. Uh, tiny little things. And they put on so much growth in a matter of a year. And then these were a couple of those fever fuse that I had transplanted out of the cut garden. These are like a double flowering one. Oh yeah, and um, some of my lilies, the rabbits came through and just stripped the foliage off of. But all in all, not, not too bad. Not as bad as it could be. My window box is still going strong, looking great. So this area, I have a project in mind for. I will not go into detail. That will be in an upcoming video pretty soon. Um, something bizarre happened. I don't know how. Um, I don't know if a deer got in here. I don't know if it was chickens scratching, if it was a wind, I'm not sure. But this shrub has been here for about three years. This is a mock orange. And a couple, no, not a couple, about a week ago, um, it was just sort of toppled over. And I have no idea how that would have happened. So I need to fix it. I'm afraid to dig it up because, I mean, for example, this, you know, we're talking 12, 16 inches of new growth on some of these branches. If I try to do something to the root system now, I'm going to sacrifice all of that. And I don't quite want to do that. Um, I have yet to see this thing bloom because it takes a few years for it to get established before that happens. <laughs> and I feel like I'm on the cusp of that happening. And if I am to dig it up, then it might not happen. I'm not sure, so I'm thinking I might try to uh, stake it. I did try to stick some stakes in the ground and like keep it propped up, that did not work. So I need to come up with some other system of securing it, I don't know. We'll see. There's Peanut. Yeah, he's waiting to go to bed. And these are the babies. We're just now getting them transitioned into the big coop. So they're still a little scared. They don't know about these guys. They don't know about their new home. Good night, my loves. 
and also um, about this coop you know I had said previously that I was gonna move it over to the kind of that corner um, of the workshop I don't think I'm gonna do that anymore because I don't actually know how we would get it moved um, I don't think the tractor could do it I think it's too large so what we're actually gonna do is just move it over kind of two, three feet so that I can finish uh, the fence going this way and it'll just be on the other side of the fence. And I actually think I'm gonna take some height off of it or bury the legs a little bit um, just because, yeah, just because, I don't know, that feels right. Um, so this is one of the many gates I have to finish. There's a gate I need to finish. There's a gate. Actually, I need to start and finish that I will do on my gate building spree. Uh, these are the new bare root strawberries that I had planted this year. Already starting to get some fruit on some of them. I have to put this over because of the rabbits and my chickens. These are a row of provider beans. And then I have some cucumbers butterhead lettuce, a whole bunch of maple seedlings, maple trees for days, um, more cucumbers that I think got nibbled by something, more beans. Yeah, um, so rabbits have been in here and I have seen squirrels in here uh, taking some of my bean seeds, so <laughs> I need to come back in and kind of replant more of these. More cucumbers, more butterhead lettuce. These are actually still in the trays I need to pop out. And at this point they're almost ready for like harvest, but whatever. And very soon I will be pulling out all of these. These are my Ariadne, I believe is how you pronounce it, ranunculus probably the most beautiful flower ever um they did really really well but the plants are starting to get powdery mildew and it's starting to get very hot um and ranunculus you know they're not really into that same with the anemones coming through and yeah yanking those very shortly and i think in one of these beds I'm going to plant some watermelon and then in another I will be planting um, some squash and getting some more carrots in, things like that. This is actually my first carrot harvest which is not quite ready yet, but you can just see little peaks of orange there. The peas are doing really well. Lots of peas growing, and the flower is just lovely. Oh, this one just created a little dense knot there. Come around the other side of this. Um, the chickens have been eating the beet foliage, which is the most bizarre thing. I don't know why they are. Uh, these will be ready for harvest probably in another week or so. Um, I've come through and taken most of the turnips. There were still a few that I wanted to get a little bit bigger. Those were nice and yummy. This strawberry patch I'm trying to protect with everything I have um, because someone is just coming in and eating all of the strawberries. We had so many that were right on the cusp of being harvested, being ripe, and yeah, they're getting eaten. So there's still some left in here. These are an ever-bearing variety though, so they will fruit throughout the season. And potato plants. I have not yet, um, straw mulched any of this stuff yet and I really really need to but the moment that I put straw in here my chickens will just freak out and come in and tear it all apart so I have a plan um 
because I cannot get the fence finished yet to attach wire fencing around the unfinished portions just to keep the chickens out just for now. And I said May I would have this fence finished, but I am a liar apparently. I think it'll be June. These are the lilies, looking really great. I have a pest on here. I don't know the name. I will look it up and post the name, but they are the most disgusting things I have ever experienced. And so I need to come through tonight and remove these. So the actual insect is like this bright red bug, this bright red beetle looking thing. And underneath all of these, which look like, a, <laughs> which look like feces to me, um, are actually like the larva. Oh, it's so gross. They are, yeah, they're icky. Um, but I've been just coming out with a mason jar with warm soapy water and sticking them in there. And fortunately they're very easy to spot and it's only been on a couple of my flowers. Um, it's not very widespread. So it's been easy to manage. Uh, these are a Monte Cristo climbing bean. And then I have them alternating. So in every other bed I have a squash. These are either Casparita or Spark, I don't recall. And then Monte Cristo beans, more squash, and more beans. And then also in this bed I have some heirloom mums and more maple trees. Uh, I got these as bare roots from a flower farmer in Georgia. I think it was Three Porch Flower Farm or Three Porch Farm. Um, some of them didn't make it. They got shipped to me on a 90 degree day and they just kind of dried right up in shipping. Um, so, you know, that happens. So that is why there's this big gap here that I need to fill with something um, and a couple and then yeah, six more and a bunch of maple trees. Over here is where the rabbits are being nuisances. Um, oh yeah, they just totally bit off this entire pepper plant. Um, I have a backup. I grew all of these from seed. These are sailfish, ace bell. Um, these are goddess. And these are a lunchbox, and these are a snacking pepper. And the tomatoes and romaines, the mini romaines. I actually just harvested a few yesterday. Delicious. Of the lettuces, not the tomatoes. Not there yet, but we are flowering. And um, I just have steaks in for now. I will be swapping these out. I have tried a few different ways of growing tomatoes and my favorite way was actually um, having like a tea post at either end of the rows with a bar across the top and twine hanging down over each plant and like letting them vine up that. I really enjoyed that way of growing. So I think that's what I'm going to do again. I am attempting to grow grass um, back where we fixed this drainage issue and put in the new French drain. And I mean, I've got some coming in, some weeds, some grass, but as quickly as I put grass seed down, the chickens come behind me and eat it. And here we are in the fire pit garden. I did purchase a few more things that I want to get in here. I wanted to add a few more pops of yellow. Um, so these are sunstruck false sunflowers, a heliopsis, and they're variegated and will have beautiful yellow daisy-like flowers. I got three of those. I got three, um, I believe these are just firefly yellow. Let's see. A firefly sunshine, pardon me. Um, yarrows. And there's the other. And so it'll kind of be this breakup of, you know, the orange and reds from the echinaceas, purples from the verbenas, yellows from the rudbeckias, kind of this pink from um, the joe pie weeds, 
pink from these cherry monardas, cherry pops monardas, purple from the asters. Yeah, and so it'll be really bright, colorful jewel tones, hopefully, I'm thinking, and a good mix of seasons as well. So this is the area that we just did. The grasses are looking a little eh, um, but they're hanging on. They're hanging on. So I'm not very concerned. <laughs> but the last thing I want to share is over here the uh, little nepetas that I planted at the same time as the ones in the corner. You can see just the much, much smaller than the others. So that's just interesting. And yeah, my theory is uh, the farm added compost in the other ones. I nearly forgot to share the courtyard. This is that shade bed to the right of the front door. And this is a summon substance hosta. I actually had to cut a few of the leaves out because they were completely covering this fern and this hookera down there. And actually that hookera is gonna have to just come out and I'm thinking pop it right over in that corner. Um, but is that just not like the most lush, beautiful sight? Oh my goodness, I love it. I am taken aback by how large the summon substance actually got. I knew that they were a large hosta, but you know, that's kind of under ideal conditions that they meet that size. And I wouldn't have necessarily anticipated that this area were its ideal conditions. So pleasantly surprised. It's encroaching onto the kind of front patio part a little bit, but I'm not bothered by that so much. So I, th I want it to stay um, just because like what an impact right at the entry to the house, you know, that's really nice. So I, I think I'm gonna keep it here. And I don't know if you can really tell, you know, but yeah, there's my hand and there's a leaf. <laughs> and on this other side here, more shady loveliness. See, here is another some in substance hosta that I planted at the same time as the other one. And I would have thought that this one was in um, better conditions than the other, more preferable. But, you know, the other one is just, just a bit happier, I suppose. And here's another one of those just don't quite know what's happening things. Um, these are two goat's beards. They're the same age, planted at the same time. Actually, they were transplanted here a couple years ago. They they took surprisingly well. They don't really like being transplanted. They have very extensive root systems, and it was it was difficult digging them up. Um, but they did really well. Maybe it's three years that they've been here. Anyway, um, yeah, this one is about two foot tall, and this one is over five foot tall. <laughs> I have no idea. I mean, they're right next to each other. Could not tell you why one is magnanimous and the other is a pipsqueak. But these are just starting to open up their flowers. They're beautiful. They're one of my favorites. And then if we go to the other side over here, you know, this stuff obviously still has not filled in that much. Um, it's doing well, everything recovered well from being transplanted. Actually, this is the best that I've seen these um, Black Hawk Big Blue stems doing, so that makes me happy. But in due time, I do actually have a clematis that I want to put back here and kind of I think what I want to do is make some sort of like wire grid system um, on the back of this and train that clematis up because this particular variety is like a 20 footer so it should be able to you know kind of fill this whole space and give the interest that I'm looking for there. 
And this little section is just one of those ones that's going to have to, you know, wait until next year. Um, I had every intention of dividing and relocating this Shenandoah switchgrass because, again, absolutely massive. And in heavy rains, it tends to fall in front of the door, but I'm just going to have to trim it and deal with it for now. This is that raspberry wine Monarda that I was talking about. This one is doing really, really, really well. And the two of these combined have all but drown out a yarrow that I have back there. And some Coreopsis that's actually hanging on. Oh, and see, being crowded out as well. <laughs> Um, this is where I took one of those button bushes and transplanted in front of the orchard there, and then another Shenandoah switchgrass. And that's how the gardens are looking as of right now. I'm pretty happy with all of the progress that I've been making, and I'm just trying to stay you know, motivated and excited about all of the projects that still need to happen. Um, but, you know, in due time, I try not to treat this like work or um you know like a chore like something that i have to do i try to you know make it something that i want to do so if i'm really not feeling it on a particular day i'm not going to do it i don't want to force it i don't want this to be anything but you know fun and enjoyable and a positive experience for me or at least as positive as it can be um because yeah i garden for my happiness um <laughs> It's, it's pure joy. I love being out here. I love seeing everything growing, flowering. I love seeing the interactions between, you know, the wildlife and my garden, even when it's the bad thing sometimes, you know, it's, it's all a learning experience and that's all really positive for me. The last thing that I want to do is kind of put any sort of negativity around this thing that I love so much. Um, that's just, no, that's just not the goal. So this is where everything stands as of right now. So with that, thank you for joining me today and we'll see you in the next video.